uh, review, uh, take a look at take a look at again um, the some of the basic trigonometric trigonometric ratios um, and some special triangles that probably at some point in your math career you, that you looked at. Um, so, so maybe that looks familiar, maybe you do remember some of it, but I'm um, just going to go through it formally. So um, there are six trig ratios, and the ones that are probably most common are sine, cosine, and tangent. But then there's also the reciprocal functions of cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And all of them um, are a ratio of two of the three sides of an angle, from that, you know, from that angle's perspective. So, so for the sine, it would be the opposite over the adjacent. Um, and cosecant would be its reciprocal. Uh, oh, sorry, not opposite over adjacent. Oh my gosh, how embarrassing. Um, it's, a, it, it's a good, right? It's a good test to see who was paying attention. Um, opposite over hypotenuse. And then uh, cosecant would be its reciprocal. So the hypotenuse over the opposite. Um, and uh, cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, where its reciprocal function, secant, would be hypotenuse over uh, adjacent. And then the one that I accidentally started uh, with opposite over adjacent, that's actually tangent. And its reciprocal cotangent would be adjacent or opposite. So, so I, I listed them in this order simply because of their reciprocal relationships, right? Like sine and cosecant are reciprocals. Um, cosine and secant are reciprocals. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. Okay. Now, um, the triangles that we have to absolutely know, uh, and really uh, kind of goes back to our unit circle, looking at like the multiples of 30 degrees, there are multiples of pi over six, multiples of 60 degrees, which are multiples of pi thirds, and multiples of 45 degrees, which are multiples of pi fourths. So um, it, it boils down to their, uh, you know, their side lengths. And for every 30, 60, 90 triangle, um, based on splitting an equilateral triangle, um, we can sort of designate the side opposite 30 degrees as x, the side opposite 60 degrees as x root 3, and the side opposite 90 degrees as 2x. They always have that particular relationship. Um, and, um, you know, you could quickly verify that if you'd like to. Just take any equilateral triangle. So I'm just, by E, is going to talk about, um, you know, just calling each side length 2x, so that if you drop an altitude, you split that 2x into x and x. And if you want to try to figure out what that side is, use the Pythagorean theorem and you find out it's x root 3. So, so every 30, 60, 90 triangle has that relationship. Similarly, in a um, 45, 45, 90 triangle, um, we can write down the relationship x, x, and x root 2. Uh, again, just right from a Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so, so we have to know those, but since all of our trig ratios end up being reduced, um, what I then kind of just think about just numerically, treating this x as if it were a 1, treating this 2x as if it were a 2, and treating this x root 3 if it, if it was just a root 3. And similarly here, call that a 1, call that a 1, and call that just root 2. Because when we're talking about ratios, the x's would have canceled anyway when you start looking at that ratio. Okay, so um, we, we need to know these values, but we don't have to necessarily memorize them. We could just draw a picture. Um, and so if I think about pi thirds, I want to put pi thirds in its standard position. And, you know, just as a, remember, a reminder, standard position always starts here at um, the positive x-axis, and we move in a counterclockwise direction. So we're going to draw a 60-degree angle, which represents pi thirds. And that 60 degree, 60 degree angle, that pi thirds always is going to be drawn um, to, to the origin there, dropping it to the x-axis. And because that's a 60 degree angle right there, right, that's what pi thirds is, that we know that the ratio of the sides would be root 3, this would be 2, and this would be 1. And now I can complete my secant ratio. If you remember, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so we're doing 2 to 1 as its ratio, which reduces to 2. So you don't have to memorize that secant of pi thirds is 2. Uh, we can quickly draw a reference triangle and, you know, label it appropriately, and then we know its ratio is 2. Okay. Now, sine of 11 pi over 6. So 11 pi over 6, again, we're starting in standard position. We're going in a counterclockwise direction. That's 330 degrees. 
And so the 330 degrees is on the outside, but again, drawing that reference triangle to the x-axis, that gives us a reference angle here of pi over six, which is 30 degrees. Well, in a 30 degrees triangle, that, that angle right there, opposite, that would be the one, this would be the two, um, and the, where I put that 30, uh, that I'm gonna label that as my root three. But my triangle is not quite labeled appropriately because I want to represent that this one is below the x-axis. So I'm gonna assign that to be negative one. So I'll make that negative one. And now when I do my sine ratio, again, it's this angle, this angle right here, sine opposite over hypotenuse. So we would get a ratio of negative one to two. And it's perfectly fine to have a negative value. The negative, uh, think, if you think about terms of vectors, if you know vectors, has have a direction. So that negative just means it's below the x-axis. No, no problem at all. Okay, let's do another one, tangent of pi 6. So again, pi 6, um, that's a 30-degree angle. Um, it's going to be in quadrant 1. And so there's my 30-degree angle. Opposite the side is 1. Hypotenuse is always 2. This is root 3. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it's a 1 to root 3 ratio. Now, technically, there's nothing wrong with 1 over root 3, but we want to be in the good habit of rationalizing this, and we'll call that root 3 over 3. Okay, um, Secant of pi fourths, uh, again, pi fourths is in quadrant 1, so that's going to create 1, 1, root 2. This 45-degree angle, that's where pi fourths lives. Um, again, we always start in the positive x-axis. We draw in a counterclockwise direction. That's how I knew that's in quadrant one. Uh, secant is you know, um, the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So it's a root two to one ratio, which is root two. Okay. Um, I like number five and six because we're going outside of quadrant one. So two pi thirds. So that's going to land us in quadrant two. That's 120 degrees. So again, we start in the positive x-axis. We go 120 degrees, so there's our 2 pi thirds, but it creates, when you draw it to the x-axis, it creates a 60 degree reference angle um, in that second quadrant. So that's 60 degrees reference angle. The side opposite 60 is the root 3. Hypotenuse is always 2. This is 1. But again, because we want to indicate that direction that we're to the left of something, it's a negative 1. Okay, then we go look at our cosecant ratio. Hypotenuse over the adjacent, sorry, opposite. So that's two over root three. Well, again, let's have good practice. That's two root three over three. There's my reduced ratio. So I still encourage you to label that negative one, even though it didn't really have an impact on cosecant, it could have had an impact on cosine or tangent or secant, anything that would depend on that X value. Okay, let's look at um, number six then together, cotangent. So cotangent of 5 pi over 6 is another second quadrant angle, except for this time that's 150 degrees. Um, that's a little bit extreme, but that's okay. Uh, which gives me a 30-degree reference angle right there. So in this case, if that's my 30-degree reference angle, then side opposite 30 is the 1. The hypotenuse is 2. This side is root 3. But again, because it's on the negative value, it's to the left on that x-axis, we want to denote it negative. Okay, and then cotangent's ratio is the reciprocal of tangent. So instead of doing opposite over adjacent, we'll do adjacent over opposite, which we can reduce and simplify to negative root 3. Okay, so at this point, if you feel very comfortable and confident um, in, in these problems, you could pause the video and do the rest or continue to follow along. I'll, I'll, I'll certainly walk through the net last four. Okay, so cosine of 3 pi over 4, second quadrant angle, 3 pi over 4 gives us a reference angle of 45 degrees. And again, remember the reference angle is the angle that's formed with the origin and the x-axis. So that's in that red dot. Um, so then that allows me to label my side lengths of 1, 1, and root 2. And then go back and check that should be a negative 1 because it's to the left of the origin. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative 1 over root 2, which reduces in terms of a simplification to negative root 2 over 2. Okay, cosecant, 7 pi over 4. I see the pi fourth, so I'm automatically already thinking 45 degrees as a reference triangle. 
we're going to situate that into the fourth quadrant because we always go in a counterclockwise direction. Remember, the reference angle sits here. So that angle opposite it would be a 1. Adjacent is a 1. Hypotenuse is a root 2. And because this side is below, we'll call it negative 1. Um, and in fact, that's going to impact the cosecant because cosecant is hypotenuse um, over the opposite. So it's root 2 over negative 1, which reduces to negative root 2. Um, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but the hypotenuse of these triangles will always be positive. So, so the only negative in terms of a vector quantity will either be moving left or moving down. Okay. Um, and let's do our last one, uh, or last row, I should say. Um, so 7 pi over 6, that's a 30 degree reference angle into quadrant 3. It's a 210 degree angle, but more importantly, it leaves us with a 30 degree reference angle. Again, that's that little red dot. Opposite 30 is 1, hypotenuse is 2, adjacent is root 3. In, the, in quadrant 3, both of those values would be negative. Um, sine opposite over hypotenuse, so negative 1 over 2, and it's already simplified. And then let's go to our, our last one here, 5 pi over 4. Again, we're in quadrant 3. This is going to be a 45 degree reference angle in quadrant 3 because that angle there that I just dotted in blue is the reference. Um, and then certainly we can label this would be a 1, this would be a 1, this is root 2. But because both of these right, are in the third quadrant, that they're both negative. Um, and so in this case, our cotangent ratio, negative 1 over negative 1, it's the adjacent over the opposite. That actually becomes a positive ratio of 1. Okay, so um, I really stress, I think, the importance, and hopefully that was clear in the video, of um, drawing the triangle and really drawing it correctly. And correctly does include um, making those negatives. So, so um, that's sort of like the first part of, of this lesson. And I'll go ahead and stop the video and create a second one where what happens if you land on a 90 degrees, a 180, a 270, where you're on the quadrants, which I like to call the quadrantal angles. Um, and that's, yeah, so that'll be the next video.